Williams takes a snap. He's going to keep it himself. Rock to the left side. Penix to the pylon. Penix wants to go downfield. Take a shot. Wide open. Touchdown, Washington. Game, set, match. Michael Penix threw it out of the road. And the Huskies march right down the field. Goes for the home run ball for Jay Mack. Touchdown, Washington. Michael Penix pulls out the arrow. Michael Penix Jr. has accomplished a lot in his rather lengthy college career. Penix no doubt has the resume to be considered as a top pick in this year's NFL draft. So Turbo, you've gone on record, what, saying he's the greatest ever to come out of college? <laughs> what is it that you like so much about this lefty QB? Well, I don't know if he's the greatest quarterback coming out of college, but I do feel like he's the best quarterback in this draft. And it's all the intangibles that you look at when you think about building a starting quarterback for an NFL franchise. It's his accuracy. It's his pocket presence, and he has the ability to beat you with his mind. How? Because he understands coverage, and he understands pressure recognition. And so when you have a quarterback that can go out on the field and not only beat you with his arm talent, but beat you with his mind, that's next level. And I think that's where Michael Penix Jr. is as, he head, as he's heading into this draft. To me, it goes back to how you were trained, right? We talk about, you know, do you have the measurables? Do you have the pedigree? Look, his football understanding, how his football IQ was built, I mean, being a young quarterback in the Kalen DeBoer system and then reuniting with him in Washington, having that pro style, know what to do, hardwired, fundamental checks, be a coverage being played against you is something that you can't teach. It's something you can teach, but it's something that you have to have 10,000 hours to master. And Michael Penix has done just that. I agree with you, Robert, in terms of being NFL ready. Michael Penix might be the guy who's ready to step in right now and best fuel and lead an NFL team. He wrote a player. Uh, he wrote a letter with the Players Tribune uh, to NFL teams, like an open letter, and it was talking about his injuries because we know the injury concerns. And he said. I wouldn't be where I was today if it wasn't for the injury, so I wouldn't take him back. And I love the mindset because he's been hardened through the adversity he's been through. I think he's the best deep ball thrower of this class. The ability to stretch the field vertically is off the chart. We know what he can do with his legs. Here he is. And that was a criticism of his because of the ACL injuries. Was he as much of a run threat? Clearly, he can still move there. But the touch on the outside, the ability to recognize man coverage, to place the ball, drop it in a tight window, is absolutely off the charts. And Robert, I'm glad you mentioned the ability to process and direct traffic. They, he was only sacked 12 times this uh, past year with Washington as in behind the best offensive line in the country. That doesn't happen just because of the offensive line. That happens because he knows what protections to get into, when to get rid of the football quickly, when to operate in a tight window. I think he's got the best film of any of these quarterbacks out there. By the way, he was phenomenal, too, on post-game interviews. I know that's down the list a little bit, but talking about the face of your franchise, he's the type of guy. So what's the concern here with Penn? Injuries, two ACLs and a shoulder. I mean, that is the durability thing does become very real. Robert said he might, he's his favorite quarterback. I think if he had a clean medical slate, I, I think he would be in the conversation between Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, or Michael Penix potentially to go number one overall. But it is a very real concern. And then you did see the game against Michigan, which I always wonder what had happened if he had lost to Texas after that 400-yard performance. We might be talking about him even more impressively. But he did struggle against Michigan, against a good team, and I think that's knocked his stats a little bit where he made a lot of mistakes under pressure. Yeah, you know, my only concern is that he might be un a little underrated in this draft, to be honest with you, fellas. He, he, he doesn't flash at you on tape as far as his athletic ability and his ability to be able to escape pressure and use his feet. We know that he can. It just doesn't flash at you like that. Maybe being a lefty is a little bit of a concern because NFL franchises are mostly investing their blind side for the left tackle. Okay, you're going to have to adjust that now, bring in a left-handed quarterback and invest in, in, in your right tackle position, even though we know that position is just as important. But other than that, guys, I don't have a whole lot of concerns when it comes to Michael Penix Jr. Like Kevin said, I think he's the most NFL-ready quarterback to play right now. Yeah, he's, he's, he's kind of boring, right? Like, you know, it's like you, you, know, you watch him play and you see him get out of things, and it's not with flash, and it's not with this overwhelming physical presence. He simply throws the ball away, <laughs> and he sees the pressure coming, and he'll take, you know, just being a tad bit less efficient for making that splash play down the field. Some things don't show up in stats, and this is really, really important for you football junkies out there. I'll take a quarterback who will throw a ball away but still average pushing the ball downfield better than nine yards a pop. 
Give me that quarterback any day that will not set the chains back, will not put himself behind the, the iron, and will live to play another down. That's called playing within the structure of what your team can provide, and he's one of the best. Yeah, so he's phenomenal. There are maybe a few questions surrounding Michael Penix Jr., but overall, sensational. The biggest question is, when will the former Husky quarterback hear his name during this year's draft? Jonathan, please tell us so we can stop wondering. I would love to tell you, this guy probably has the biggest range out of anyone, honestly, and it's because of those injury concerns. It has nothing to do with how he spends the football. In fact, I talked with one team who had him in for a private workout who said the lefty threw it as well as any quarterback that they worked out during this pre-draft process. I have talked with teams in the top 10 who have strong interest in him, but I don't believe they would take him in the top 10 because of the two ACLs and the shoulder. And so I have him with the Broncos or the Vikings, and that is if they ultimately miss out on a J.J. McCarthy. Maybe they're trading down from their current perches at 11 and 12 and 13. Maybe the Raiders as well get involved with him, looking for someone to match with Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew in this new era of Raider football. Outstanding. Thank you, J.J. We move from one Pac-12 quarterback to another. Coming up, could Bo Nix be the answer behind center for some quarterback needy team come Thursday night? Does Bo know what it takes to play in the NFL? We will tell you what these guys know next.